Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. You join us as we leave the beautiful town of Omis. We will definitely be coming back here in the future for another holiday as it's such an amazing place. wherever you want. There's only us here. Oh, okay. Rob and Alex are staying on a small campsite right on the coast. We spent the evening chatting about all our adventures before heading off the following morning for the National Park. Hello guys, we're right up sort of towards the north of Croatia now and uh, yesterday we met up with a couple of old friends of ours, Rob again, he's, he's back again, joined us again and this time we've got Alex Frood with us as well. There's only a handful of um, guys out in Europe at the moment so it's really nice to see a couple of friendly faces after a few weeks on our own and we're heading up to the I uh, don't know how to pronounce it properly, so don't shoot me. <laughs> Litvica National Park. This is one of the things that we wanted to see more than anything else on this whole trip. We already said that we must go and see the National Park in Croatia on this trip. So, yeah, we've been really looking forward to this. And uh, with all the rain that we've had lately, the waterfalls should be amazing. They might not be as clear and crystal clear and blue and turquoisey like you see on some of the photographs on Google but I'm sure it's going to be amazing so we've got about an hour's trip further north temperatures dropped dramatically we were about 15 degrees where we were parked up yesterday and now heading up through the mountains it's dropped down to about six degrees so yeah quite a dramatic change and in the distance on the mountains I can see snow so it's gonna be colder over the next few days because we're heading up towards Slovenia and back into Austria and up into the Alps so it's definitely gonna get colder the further north we get oh look at that they're all tanks there oh. wow. but the scenery here is still really green it reminds me a little bit of the highlands of Scotland. Mountains, you know, no civilization, very sparsely populated, but yeah, beautiful. And the whole of Croatia has been lovely. The scenery has been fantastic. So yeah, come along with us on this trip up through Northern Croatia and we'll touch base with you again when we get to the uh, national park.
for better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. Hold on tight, I can smell the shore, it's right in front of us if we just hold on tight. This vision that I saw is getting closer every dawn. So what do you think we finally made it to the national park? Us. So far oh, we've only been here what 15 minutes maybe even 10. Yeah only seen. Um, only seen a couple of waterfalls but so far amazing. Yeah, it's stunning, it really isn't is it? it's epic. The water is just crystal clear isn't it it's lovely. It is lovely. I'm really not too nice. sure about all these little bridges you keep making me walk over but <laughs> I'm doing all right. <laughs> yeah. A bit bouncy. Hopefully it will come out on video. Yeah. I mean, you can hear the rush of the water now, hopefully, and this is just a tiny little bit of water. Probably can't hear a thing now. <laughs> <laughs> the shout. But yeah, no, enjoy it. It's, it's beautiful. all the water 
rushing down under the steps. Yeah, it's cold, isn't it? Yeah. You see it like when it comes through. Yeah, there's a little bit of <laughs> through. Yeah, if you're ever in uh, northern Croatia, you seriously must come and do this national park. It's so stunning, the waterfalls are beautiful, the water itself is just crystal clear. Yeah, it's just, it's stunning, you know, you can see why it's a World Heritage Site. It's really beautiful and uh, very reasonable as well, because the actual trek we're on is Route B, which is about four kilometres. You get uh, a boat ride down one of the major lakes and you also get a train journey back from the top lake back down to the visitors car park so and that's 80 kunas which is roughly converted to about 10 to 12 pounds so that's a superb value for money yeah it's, it's incredible and uh, there's very very few people here because it's very late in the year and uh, but it, it's open all year round other than I think it shuts probably for Christmas Day and Boxing Day but you can come any time so I think they shorten the routes depending on the time of year because of the daytime it shuts early I think it shuts at four o'clock today um, but yeah still terrific yeah definitely worth a visit so I'll put all the details in the description below and if you're up this way now you've got to check it out it's amazing quick update on where we're at so we've come back out of North Croatia into Slovenia we didn't record the border crossing because obviously there's lots of police about and uh, we had to get out of the van but basically they stamped our passports so coming from Croatia to Slovenia we're back in the EU a little bit earlier than we originally planned um, but we're still okay with our 90 days we've been out for a couple of weeks so it's just extended it a little bit enough and then it was a really simple border crossing they just wanted to have a look at the passports have a look at the v5 registration document for the vehicle and then they did ask just to have a look in the back um, just to make sure it was camper van everything was okay but it was all routine nothing uh, you know nothing untoward so very very simple very very easy no problems and then as soon as we got into Slovenia we had to nip into a petrol station and buy the vignette which is like their version of road tax it's a sticker that you put in your windscreen and it was about 12 euros for the Slovenia one and about another 12 euros for the Austrian one because eventually once we get through Slovenia we'll be across the border into Austria and then back over the Austrian Alps so we took the opportunity and paid for the vignette for both um, from the petrol station and that was quite simple so 24 euros and we're covered for all the roads going back and then now in front of me what I can see is the start of the Austrian Alps massive mountains snow on the top yeah it looks really incredible so uh, 
it's going to get a lot steeper and a lot colder pretty soon I imagine but check out some of these views amazing Frosty one this morning. I can already hear people jumping on the ski jump. Wow, they're keen, aren't they? Um, there we are, parked right behind us. There, we're at uh, Olympic ski jumping resort in right up in the north of Slovenia. I'll put uh, a little map up just to see where where we are, so you can have a look. And uh, yeah, early frosty morning, as you can probably tell. A bit of uh, <laughs> on my breath. <laughs> It's a cold one today, but it's a fantastic little park up this. We had uh, electric hook up there, free water. Yeah, brilliant. And check this out for a view. The sun's come up over there and it's shining on these snow-capped mountains up here. Can you see that in the distance there? Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? I'll give you a proper look. I'll spin the camera around and you can have a have a decent look at it but it's amazing yeah really incredible place Here in the Nordic Ski Centre in what looks like an underground car park is a ski centre with proper real snow and guys doing cross-country skiing. How mad is that? It looks like an underground car park. But no, there's a 900 metre track here apparently. As well as ski jumping and the indoor cross country skiing, in the main centre they also do indoor skydiving.
Leaving Slovenia, we wanted to make the trip back to southern Germany to visit the famous eagle's nest. The first part of the journey was a short trip north up to the Austrian border. However, after climbing the mountains to the border crossing, we found a concrete bollard in the way and police manning the crossing. So I pulled over into this little lay-by on the right-hand side to ask what was happening. The policeman said we couldn't come through this crossing as the road ahead was closed. And to my amazement, he then told me that we'd have to go back through Italy. I was just stunned for a minute, having to go back through another country, I thought that was going to be hundreds of miles. But as it turned out, you can see on this next map, the whole journey through Italy and back into Austria was literally just more than 20 minutes across two more borders. So in less than half an hour, we travelled from Slovenia through Italy and into Austria. How crazy is that? So we're on a campsite just outside the town of Birch's Garden and uh, hopefully you can see in the distance there the snow-capped Alps. It's a fantastic campsite here, got loads of facilities, got heated outdoor swimming pools, saunas, yeah it's really well provided for and all included in the price of the stay. And if you're just on your own with a camper van I think it's about 29 euros and then it goes up to 39 if there's two of you. But Considering everything else is included, yeah, it's not bad really. And uh, it's surrounded by all these beautiful mountains. Fantastic setting. And can't see it today because there's a lot of cloud cover, but just over to my right in the top of those mountains where the clouds are is the famous Eagle's Nest. Um, but sadly, we're end of season, so unfortunately we can't go up there. That's closed, but normally there'd be a restaurant up there and you can take a mini bus tour up to the top there and the views would be incredible but today I don't think you'd see much today because there's so much mist about but the mountains in the distance are just getting the sun on them and uh, yeah with the naked eye it, it's incredible the sight down the valley there is brilliant. So it's a good time to introduce our new travel companion, Alex. Hi, how you doing? Hi, how you doing? All right. Just uh, for the uh, viewers, tell us a little bit about yourself. 
Cool, yeah, my name's Alex. Uh, I have a channel called Mispronounced Adventures because I'm dyslexic and I work as a mountain guide normally, so I take clients all over the globe. And this is my full-time house, my van. And what van is this, Alex? This is a new model Ford Transit. It's like the medium, the L3 H3, so not a long body, but um, it still fits in most supermarket car parking spaces, which is convenient for my work as well. And everything's your own work inside? and Yeah, all, all completely built by me over COVID. I had a, a lot of free time, <laughs> funnily <laughs> enough, to make a channel about it. And uh, yeah, it's sort of made it up as I went along. Shower room and then a fold up bed, which is a little bit of a different design for my van. So you have full access and no garage. And do you live in the van full time or? Yeah, full time living in the van since about April, in April 2021. And then I did about half, two months and it half finished last November, December as well when I sell Christmas trees. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, yeah, been been loving it. It just made sense for my lifestyle. And Alex is a really good guy to follow because you've been to some unbelievable places, it's, particularly yeah, on this trip, haven't yeah. you? It's been uh, six weeks where we've gone all the way up to the Arctic Circle and all the way down to Dracula's house in Romania for Halloween and then over to the Adriatic in Croatia and now in Germany, the mountains. It's been yeah. a, a mad six week recce trip for planning my big next big one. Amazing. I'm going to take a look inside your van and show the guys because it is pretty cool. So no worries. Have a look in. So you've got a pull down bed, take it from this section. Yeah. Folds down pretty much the full width for the van. Full width of the van, it's just under a Super King when it's down. Over the top of the kitchen area. But then obviously that gives you all this working space during the day, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Still plenty of storage because I guess I don't have a bike, so a garage wasn't needed for me. Sure. Yeah, loads of cupboard space down here. Yeah. I like the way you've got all of this lighting in all the recesses. And yeah. The, the, and the yeah. lighting up here, under the cupboards, and the lighting on the ceiling. Playing with balance lighting. It's really cool. Like shadow gaps all over the cupboards and that. Yes. Yeah. Nice. It's all uh, integrated for different settings as well so you can have just the, the bed area lit or just the kitchen if you're cooking or uh, at night you can get out of bed and just have the floor lighting on to not illuminate everything really nice done it really well mate Thank you very much. and take it here and here we've got the, yeah, I'll put the light on it. shower and toilet is it uh, yeah yeah shower room and uh, also a drying room or a sauna turns out if you want to have the diesel heater vented in there as well ah okay so you can dry all your wet clothes and that and then you've actually got which a lot of people haven't got a walk through yeah full slide through into the full cab full slide through into the cab that keeps it nice and there uh, single chairs in the cab awesome that just reduces the heat loss end doesn't it yeah, to the rest of the black and white difference the rest of the van travel trinkets for my works yeah that's brilliant mate awesome so you're not with us long are you you've got to shoot off pretty shortly yeah my six weeks is over um i've got to drive today from the bottom of germany to calais so about 700 miles 800 miles my euro tunnel tomorrow get back into the uk and you're back to work aren't you for the christmas period yeah so i've got to sell christmas trees which is uh, good because i get to live in the van is that, is that something Santa asked you to do when you was in the Arctic Circle? <laughs> I, was, I was just checking on the stock for the winter when I was up with him. When I met, when I met Santa. I wish you a safe journey, mate. Thank you very much. Right, and we'll safe catch up with yours. you when we're back in the UK. Yeah, definitely. Cheers, buddy. See ya. So here we are in the freezing cold Bavarian mountains of southern Germany. <laughs> it's about minus three degrees outside. <laughs> No, it's nice. And how warm is it in there? It's really warm, it's like a bath in here. You can see the steam coming off of it. Yeah, I know. It's pretty tasty. Unless you get your head out and then it's cold. Yeah. So. But just had to film this bit to prove that we did actually go in it. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise nobody will believe us. No. I'll show them a bit of the background. <coughs> so, this is actually what it's like at the moment. Cannot see a thing, it is so foggy. And it is really cold. <laughs> 